One of the most important elements of any backup strategy are offline backups, which means that you disconnect the backup media as soon as the backup is done. Offline backups protect your data against damage and data loss caused by overvoltage or lightning strikes, as well as ransomware attacks, as your data cannot get encrypted when the drive is not connected to your PC. For an offline backup you can use flash drives, a USB disk, or you could use a hot swap bay to backup onto ordinary hard disks. I like to use at least two disks that I alternate between for my offline backups. How frequently you do offline backups and how many drives you use is entirely up to you and your use case. So you get your backup software of choice, connect your first backup media, assign a drive letter and set up your backup job to use that drive letter. The next time you do a backup you use the other media. You assign the drive letter again, let the backup run and now you would think that Windows knows that these two drives must use the drive letter O. But when you connect the first one again, you will notice that it gets assigned a different drive letter, because Windows only remembers the last drive which used a specific drive letter. So what you end up with is that every time you do an offline backup, you must manually change the drive letter to what you configured in your backup software, which is extremely annoying. Luckily there is a free tool called the USB Drive Letter Manager, which takes care of this. First you download the tool and run the installer. Once the installer is done you go to C, Program Files and open the folder USB DLM. The application runs as a Windows service and is configured by editing the edit INI file. But don't worry, it's quite simple and the application comes with a very well done documentation. So to get the application to assign the drive letter O to both drives, we click on the edit INI CMD file and scroll down to the drive letter section where we add device ID. Then we go to the disk management, right click on the drive we want USB DLM to assign a drive letter for, select properties, go to details, select the device instance path from the drop down menu, right click on the value and select copy. Then we go back to the INI file and paste it here. Next add another device ID for the second drive. Disconnect the first one and connect the second one. Copy the device instance path from the drop down menu and paste it into the INI file. And lastly we have to tell USB DLM which drive letter we want to assign to these drives. So I enter O for letters. Then save the INI file, disconnect the second drive and connect the first one, which gets the drive letter O assigned. Then disconnect that one and connect the second one again, which also gets the drive letter O assigned, so USB DLM is working. Now what if we want to also assign a specific drive letter to hot swappable hard disks, like the one I just connected. First copy the device instance path. Then go to the INI file, add a new drive letter group and tell the application to assign the drive letter X to this group. Then disconnect that hard disk and connect the second one. Copy the device instance path, add a new device ID and paste the instance path here. Save the INI file and you are done. USB DLM will now assign the drive letter X to these hot swappable hard disks and the drive letter O to the flash drives. Should you connect both flash drives at the same time, then one of them will get a different drive letter for as long as both are connected. When you connect just one of them, then USB DLM will always assign the correct drive letter, which is O in this example. Now what if you don't want USB drives to even have a drive letter? With USB DLM you can simply mount a USB drive as a folder anywhere on your existing file system, which can be quite useful. In this example here I told USB DLM to use the drive name for the name of the mount point. But you can also use any of the other available values for the name of the folder. I've used USB DLM for almost a month now and I wish that I had found this application sooner because it makes managing USB card readers and any other kind of removable media just so much easier. If you want to find out more about what this application offers then you can find the entire documentation on the website of the developer. A link is in the description. And that's all for today. I hope that you enjoyed this quick tutorial video, which just to be clear, was not sponsored by the developer or anyone else. If you have any questions or if you know similar helpful underrated tools that more people should know about, then please let me know in the comments below. 
Also, I want to thank my patrons for their awesome support. And if you would like to join them, then you can find the link to my Patreon page in the description. If you enjoyed this video, then please give it a like, subscribe for more, ring the bell to get notified when I upload my next video, and I hope to see you next time. Until then, have a nice day and take care. My name is Chris, and this was Battle Nonsense.